Sound okay there, everyone? Can you all hear me? Good stuff. Good morning online. It's great to have you join us. Uh, my name is Jonathan, um, or John, you can call me John. It's a privilege to be speaking to you today. I am one of the leaders here at Every Nation Slough. And, uh, yeah, it's a joy to be doing this. So, um, hey, ZZ, good morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, as Steve um, just um, alluded to there, the book of Joshua, that's where we're going to be reading from this morning, is the book of Joshua. So you can turn there. Um, we're going to be looking at Joshua and him preparing, over, making preparation to cross over. And that is actually the title of my message today, is prepare to cross over. Um, I don't know if anyone, or some of you of course, would have been here last week online as well, but there was this word that was brought from Isaiah chapter 43, and it said, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And we're talking about this crossing over, and, and the first thing I just want to say is we're not crossing over to a destination where we finally arrived and we can be, yes, I've now arrived. We're on this journey. It was a constant journey and we're crossing over into a new season of what God is wanting to do in and through us. Okay, we're on board there. We're not landing anywhere. We're not um, arriving, but we're on this journey with God has something new, a new season for us as individuals and for us as a church, every nation slough. So when we think of preparation. I want us to think a bit about what that means, what preparation looks like, preparation for what, how do we prepare. And I wanted to start off with a bit of a silly illustration, but, uh, but contrasting prepared and feeling unprepared. And, and an illustration that I, I thought would, would be quite funny was football. I, I, I love football. I've, I've grown up playing football. And, um, and I've played in a variety of different kinds of teams, from your sort of casual five-a-side kickabout to a proper 11-a-side with a club. You sign contracts, and you have training throughout the week. You have matches. And so on the one hand, you've got a prepared team where you are part of a team where there's a, a number of reserves and, and, and so the manager looks at how he's going to substitute who he's playing. You prepare for your opponent specifically. You train specifically. You meet throughout the week having practices and uh, you study strategy. You study um, uh, the, the, the way the other team's going to set up. You really go into those games feeling confident because you've prepared, you've trained, you've done the drills, you've done the practices, and you've, you, you really are prepared for that team that you're going to be playing. And each team, you have separate and, and, and specific preparation. And then on the other hand, you've got your, your five-a-side or your, your kickabout with a group of friends, and, and that can be very unprepared. That can be quite a challenge, actually, because Unfortunately, some of the guys, you're not even sure if they're going to arrive. They might have had too much to drink from the night before. And so they could be arriving slightly um, not fit and not ready for the game ahead. And, and there's a real sense of unprepared um, in the way that you play those games. You're not even confident if you're going to have enough guys to play. And, and yeah, there's, there's no practicing. You, you don't know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Each game is a, a, a learning experience. So, I was wondering, I think we can all perhaps relate to the contrast of feeling prepared for something and unprepared. Whether that's a job interview, or a specific meeting, or a presentation that you have to give, or maybe it's an exam. I'm, I'm assuming, looking around here, we probably all sat through exams. Um, as I said, the sports illustration, whether you're playing a match, whether you're setting yourself the target of doing a race or an endurance event, there's the preparation that goes in. You study, you do the research, you, you figure out the stats and figures, you lose the weight, 
you, uh, you, you tone the muscles, you go to the gym, you get prepared. And there's a real sense of uh, excitement, perhaps, about that event or about that presentation, about that interview. You're going in there, you're feeling confident, you're feeling great, you know your stuff. And it's a great feeling. There's even peace in the way that you can approach that specific meeting or event. There's a, there's a confidence in you that you know your stuff. And you contrast that to being in an exam or a meeting or a race where you're unprepared and you haven't done the research and you're a bit afraid that you might get found out. You might get that, that, that feeling of being out of your depth. Um, or when you're running the race and you haven't done the training and that race is hard, it's tough. And so there's these contrasts of feelings and, and I'm sure we can all agree that we prefer the feeling of being prepared. We prefer that, that, that sense of, yes, I've done what I need to do. I'm going into this event or this meeting or this interview and I am prepared. And whether you are joining us today as a believer, as a follower of Jesus, whether you're joining online and you believe in Jesus or not, I believe that we can all benefit from being prepared and and perhaps if you don't consider yourself a follower of Jesus, being prepared is a good thing. Being prepared for your life and for what is coming. Perhaps even a step of preparation is thinking about God, the eternal purpose, the meaning of life, what you are here for. So wherever you're at, I just pray that you feel welcome and I trust that you will encounter Jesus today, online in your home or here in this building, that you'll really meet with Jesus. So, as a group of believers, as I said, well, as actually Greg has, has already alluded to in the service, that we are on a mission together. Here at Every Nation Slough, we are on a mission together to glorify God, to make disciples, and to make a difference. We're not just going to emotions. We don't just come, go to church, go home, tick it off our list of things that we think we should do. No, we're here together, meeting together being strengthened and energized to go out into our lives, into our weeks, make a difference. Am I still connected? Yes. Okay. We see clearly from Scripture that God has chosen and designed and created and established the church to outwork His purposes on the earth, that we are called to love people, to make a difference, to advance His kingdom, powerfully on the earth to make disciples of all nations. So for that, we have a choice to be prepared. And I think there's a slide. We have a choice to be prepared. We can't be forced. We can't be coaxed into doing it. It really comes down to an invitation of, do I choose to prepare? Do I choose to, 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 to surrender to this vision to submit to what God is wanting to do in and through us as a corporate and in and through you as an individual? And will we choose to prepare? You see, like that meeting or that interview or that sports event, you had the choice to prepare for it. And there was the contrast of either going into it feeling great or going into it and struggling. And likewise, we've got this choice to be prepared. And especially now at this uh, week of, um, of, of prayer and fasting and consecration start as we launch together as a global family of every nation churches. We've got a choice to come now and to prepare, to prepare ourselves for what God wants to do in and through us. So hopefully you are all in the book of Joshua. Um, as I said in the beginning, we're going to be reading there. I just want to grab a drink of water. But Joshua chapter 1, and uh, yeah, we've got it up there. So I'm going to read it for us. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. 
Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, just as I promised to Moses. So it's this amazing account of God promising Joshua to, that he's going to be with him and that Joshua is actually going to take the people of Israel into the promised land. Um, there's this commissioning that God, uh, this commissioning moment that God has with Joshua. He then um, promises to be with Joshua as he was with Moses. He commands him to be strong and courageous. There's God commanding Joshua to obey, obey his words, obey his commands, obey his laws. And I love how in verse 7 and 8, there's not there because it's just a little extra, is um, the conditions to, to Joshua's success. There's, there's conditions. He says, stick to my words. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. Be very careful to do according to all the law that Moses, my servant, commanded. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left. See that how there's these conditions to, to Joshua's success and crossing over requires obedience. And God still requires that obedience and that devotion from us. We see then that Joshua passes on these instructions to the people and he then tells them to prepare yourself and to remember. And so we pick up again. There should be a slide. Chapter 1, verse 10 to 13. It says, And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, Pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, Prepare your provisions, for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan to go in and to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the word that the Lord remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. I love that. Prepare your provisions. There's an element of practicality in what Joshua is commanding the people. And remember God's promises. Again, it's come through in the service this morning. Remember those words. There's a lot of stuff that we need to forget. We need to let go of the former. Behold, he's doing a new thing. But words of God, promises of God to you, to us, we never forget those. We never let those go. We hold on to them. We contend for them. We then see in chapter 2, there's Rahab. So she's in, she's part of the, she, she's in Jericho, in this uh, walled city. And she, she acknowledges that, that God's hand is with this, this, these Israelites that are coming. Her and her whole um, uh, group of people, they're, 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 they're their town, their city. They're afraid. They know that God is with these Israelites. So we see she, she looks after um, some spies that belonged to, to Joshua's men. And... Um, she acknowledges that, that God is with the Israelites. Then you see Joshua rising early in the morning, and he then speaks to the people that Joshua 3, verse 5, what Steve, Steve Murrell said in his little video. So Joshua rises early, this is chapter 3, and he says in verse 5, Joshua then said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So we then see that Joshua is speaking to the people, giving them instructions, specific instructions God then gives to Joshua about what to do. We see chapter 3 is full of these very specific instructions that God is giving to the Israelite people. And part of that is actually stepping into the Jordan River, and then only when they step in, when the priests step in carrying the ark, does the river then stop and they're able to pass through on dry land? So again, just an element of, of the faith that, um, that they had to have in order to fulfill that command and that specific command. We then see chapter 4. They're instructed to build a memorial, to remember this stuff, to remember what God has done. Do not forget. We then have Joshua... Again, following some specific instructions, uh, circumcising the people and obeying these instructions, he then has this encounter 
with an angel, the commander of the Lord's armies, and he worships. We then see chapter 6, a radical account of how God defeats the city of Jericho and hands that land to the Israelites. But unfortunately, chapter 7, we then have the Israelites forgetting. And I know that we've gone through quite a bit here, and I'm not planning to preach on all this, but it's an incredible chapter, a few, a few, a few chapters. It's just one to six of Joshua and what God does. But that Joshua is this man called to take the people into the new that Moses didn't. And how God's hand was on him, but how Joshua had to prepare. He had to have some specific instructions to follow. And there's so much that we can learn and dissect from that portion of Scripture. But we're focusing today on preparation. Preparing. What has God called us to do as a church? What are we going to do? Fortunately, it's all going to get circumcised. But God is, God is preparing us. And God has things for us to do, for what He wants to do in and through us. You see, God's promise and mission for Joshua was specific. And God's promise and mission for us as individuals and as a church is specific. We see that Joshua listened, he prepared, and then he obeyed. And we too have that choice of will we listen, will we prepare, and will we obey? Because we have this mission as a global group of churches at every nation to glorify God, to make disciples of all nations, and to make a difference. But how do we achieve this mission? The, 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 one of the ways is, is, abiding, is, is abiding in Jesus. And, and we see that this theme for this week's um, pre uh, preparation for, for fast, fasting and prayer, and as Steve said, everything throughout this year, this word abide has really come through. And we know that Jesus said to us, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so there's this call to abide. How do we achieve our mission? We abide. See, Jesus is our perfect example of someone who was prepared, who prepared for all that he had to do. We see he was born as we celebrated Christmas just a few weeks ago. But then as a young boy, there's accounts throughout Scripture of Jesus going and spending time in the temple, debating, uh, 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 having conversations with the teachers of the law. He would go and spend time reading the Word. We see before he started his public ministry that he went for 40 days in the desert and was tested, was tempted. He fasted and he had time preparing for that which he was called to do. We then see him throughout his, his public ministry. There's often these moments that Scripture records where Jesus would get up early. He would rise before anyone else. He would go and have time with his Father, go and pray, go and commune, connect with, with his dad. We see this daily reliance. You know, Jesus only did what the Father did. He only said what he heard the Father saying. There was this abiding. And then, of course, we know that when when Jesus went to the cross, that he prepared. He was alone in the garden. Obviously, he wanted his mates to come and support him, but they all fell asleep. But Jesus was preparing. And it wasn't easy preparation either. He was sweating blood. He was saying, God, I don't want to do this. Not my will, but yours. There was a surrender, this place of submission that Jesus came to in his preparation. And so together, you know, we, as we've been saying, are inviting, I'm inviting us, Steve is inviting us, we're, we're saying, come, let's, let, let's prepare together. Let's, let's prepare ourselves for the new that God has for us, this new season. Not a destination. We don't arrive in 2022. We're on this journey, but there's this invitation to prepare. And there's something beautiful about that togetherness, doing it together. How powerful that churches throughout the globe are together, coming together to seek God, to abide in His Word, to hear from the Father what we are called to do. 
And so how are we preparing? Well, this, again, should be a slide. Consecration, prayer, and fasting. Excuse me as I just have another sip of water. Are we all still with me? Yes? yes. All around, good stuff. How are we preparing? Consecration, fasting, prayer. Consecration, what is consecration? As Steve said, it's being set apart. Setting ourselves apart. You know, I'm not here to, to tell us that we've got to give up this, give up that. I'm not here to, to lay down a list of rules of how, how you should be, what you should give up. But consecration, it's, it's, it, it's that invitation that I think Christ gives us to, to set ourselves apart. We're not called to be like the world. We're called to be different. We see in Scripture, we're, 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 we're meant to be like a, a, a city on a hill, you know, a light in the darkness, salt. We're called to be different. We're not called to blend in to everyone else and how they live their lives. There's this call to be different, a call to set ourselves apart. And in this week, it's a great opportunity to just set ourselves apart, to think, how am I different? Am I blending in or am I standing out? I had this amazing conversation with my son this, this week and just sort of trying to encourage him that he's not called to be like everyone else in his class. And whatever, what, what is okay for everyone else is not okay for him. And it's not this, 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 this um, putting this heavy burden, but it's an encouragement, it's a call, it's a, it's a call out of and into that we are called to be different. A consecration, it requires... It requires humbling ourselves, submitting, surrendering, you know, just, just walking this week, praying about this, about this message. And it really is this, this, this laying down is what God's called us to, to submit, to surrender. You know, we, we, we deny ourselves our natural cravings. When you think about fasting and, and, and not eating or not doing certain things, it is. It's this, 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 this process of denying ourselves something that we would normally do. But we see how strong it makes us spiritually. And we see the, the focus that actually comes as we do it, as we step in, as we say yes to this invitation of fasting and consecration and prayer. Our spiritual senses are tuned and the praying, you know, we're, we're, the praying, it's, if we're not, if, if, if we're just fasting, it's just like having, it's just like being on a diet, you know, and a, and a diet will change the way you look, but a fast will change the way we see. And it's this, this, this combination of fasting and prayer, and praying in the Spirit, being led by God, not just coming with our list of, of requests and requirements, but it's really saying to God, Lord, what is on your heart? And I've always found with, with, with this week of prayer and fasting that, yeah, day one can be a real challenge. Day two, I've found it's often the hardest. But sort of from Wednesday, Thursday, day three onwards, it's just this, this, new, this new realm that, that you just sort of feel so much closer, so much more intimate with the Father. And so, so just to remind us that it's, 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 not, it's not just a... a, a us as a church saying, we are now fasting and we expect you to do it. It really is an invitation to say, I want to get in, I want to tune myself and get in tune with what God is doing. And we, we, you know, we see there's this abiding and this greater sensitivity. We see how God, the Holy Spirit, shapes our hearts and molds us as we fast and as we pray, as we submit, as we surrender and say, God, not my will, but yours. As Jesus, throughout Scripture, showed us the submission to his Father's will, this, this closeness, this abiding that he had with the Father. You know, this is not uh, a moment where we think that we're fasting, and so come on, God, I'm doing this for you. You now, therefore, need to do something for me. Or, you know, we're not sort of bending God's arm. We're not twisting his arm, saying, Lord, look what I've done for you. Now, come on, you need to come through for me and answer my prayers. We're not trying to manipulate God. We're coming to surrender, to submit, to say, Lord, what is on your heart? 
What is, on, what is on your heart for us as a corporate, as a group of churches, as a church here in Slough with a specific purpose to make disciples in Slough, to make a difference in Slough, to glorify God in Slough, but also us individually in our workplaces, in our, with our families, with our relationships, with our sports teams, with our kids. We're called to make a difference. And we do that as we surrender to his will. So, for us, as I said, we have a, an opportunity to, to, to jump on board here. And, and, but I want us to, to change the way we look at it. To, um, again, to, to, to not look at this week as what we have to give up. But to flip the focus. Let's flip our focus from things that we're not doing to what we are doing we get the opportunity to focus on Jesus, to focus on the Lord and what his will is for us as a group. It's not about going, ah, I can't have this, I can't do that, I can't do this, but rather let's flip the focus to what we can do, who we are seeking, who we are on mission with. And as we said earlier, the power of unity and coming together corporately, you know, these prayer meetings throughout the week and the evening to join those to get on board. So much power in unity and doing stuff together, praying together. Let's not look at what we are giving up. Let's not think, oh, I'm not going to be eating that this week. It's going to be so tough, or I can't have this, or I can't watch that. Don't focus on those things. Let's flip our focus on who we are seeking and who we get to have relationship with. And in that moment, of, and in this, 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 this week of what we do, we grow stronger, we grow more in tune with the Spirit. We hear His voice better. He shapes us, He molds us, He makes us. You know, as we surrender, as we submit, He moves powerfully through us. So in response, this will be a slide. Prepare and be expectant. And that is really just what, what we can do this week, how I want to encourage us this week. Prepare. How can we prepare? We can fast. We can pray. We can consecrate ourselves. We can ask, God, what, are, what is the next for me? What is this new season for me? If you don't know, get alone with him this week. Ask him. Ask him what he has for you. Because he has so much for each of us as individuals and as a corporate. So prepare to cross over like that sports event, like, that, like that, uh, that interview. We've got an opportunity to prepare. And then be expectant. Let's be expectant of this week. Yes, it's good to do things out of obedience, but it's even better to do them out of faith and expectancy that God is going to move powerfully as that verse, chapter 3, verse 5 Consecrate yourselves, for the, tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And this year, 2022, let's be expectant. Let's believe God to do wonders among us. Wonders in our personal finances. Wonders in our personal relationships. Wonders when the areas that we need breakthrough. In our families, in our workplaces. Let's be expectant. Let's be expectant that this week, as I said, we're not manipulating God. We're not strong-arming Him. We're not trying to twist His arm and say, God, look what I did for you. Come, now through for, come through for me now, Lord. No, but let's be expectant that He is a God who answers our prayers. and He is a God who wants to shape us. He wants to transform us. And that as we meet together and do this corporately, that there's power in that unity and there's power in what we do. Just a thought that I did have this week, um, as I as I as I land this now, was um, you know that 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 um, principle of sowing and reaping, and I just wanted to challenge us this morning to encourage us. Is there's there's, there's, there's um, in the word it speaks about he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly, but if you sow abundantly, you can reap abundantly, and again, just to encourage us guys to to think about how we approach this week. 
Are we just approaching to give the bare minimum, to tick it off the, off, off the list and say, yep, I did it? Or are we really invested in this, coming, going, yes, God, I really want to set myself apart this week. Father, I want to hear what it is that you're saying to me this week. Lord, I want to prepare myself for all that you want to do in and through me. So won't we, um, won't you stand? I'm just going to pray, and then I'm going to hand over to Greg to land the service. Father God, I just thank you for this week, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the privilege of fasting and praying and consecrating ourselves. God, I thank you that you are a God who is real, that you are a real God, and that you want to meet with your people, that you want to shape us, that you want to mold us, not because you're a control freak, but because you love us and because you have good things for us. You have good plans and good purposes. And your will is perfect, God. And so, God, I thank you that as we come together as a corporate group of people who follow you, who love you, Lord, we want to surrender ourselves. We want to come, Lord. We want to prepare. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to show us how we can prepare. Each of us individually, Lord, show us how we can prepare, how we can get ready, how we can cross over into the new that you have for us. Holy Spirit, lead us, even this afternoon, as we leave this place, that, Lord, you would begin to highlight things that you're wanting to do. God, you love us so much that you, you don't want us to just leave us as we are. That your plan is always to, to transform us, to make us more like your son. So God, we do. We come expectant. We are expectant, God, that you're going to move powerfully this week. That you're going to move powerfully through us as individuals, with our own hopes and dreams and plans. And God, you're going to move powerfully through us as a church here in Slough through us as a group of churches, of every nation churches throughout the globe, that, God, you move powerfully this week. We're expectant, God, that you move, that you reveal yourself to us, that we would abide with you, God, that we wouldn't just be going on a diet. We're not just stopping certain things, but we're setting ourselves apart, preparing ourselves for all that you want to do through us, and that through this, Lord God, we see differently our eyes are opened to see differently as we set ourselves apart for you, Jesus, for your kingdom, for your purposes, your will to be done here on earth, here in Slough, here in our lives as it is in heaven. So God, we just thank you and we trust you to do wonders on our behalf in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we give